Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for January 19th, 2022. On this podcast, I get to bring the word of God to you every weekday morning. And so we hear from God. God gives me a word. I lay it all out for you. I formulate it in the way that he gives it me to formulate it. And then I share it with you through my own personality for the glory of God. That's what we're going to talk about today. Ministry takes place when divine resources meet human needs through a loving channel to the glory of God. Let me repeat that. I got that definition from Dr. Warren W. Wearsby many, many years ago. Um, Wearsby, uh, Dr. Wearsby wrote many books, but uh, there's a book, a little book called "On Being a Servant, a Servant of God." If you're a man, uh, uh, if you're called to the to the gospel, to preach the gospel, if you're called to ministry, you should read that book. It's called "On Being a Servant of God." In that book, he said, "This is how you define ministry," and, and I love it. Ministry takes place when divine resources meet human needs through a loving channel to the glory of God. When you realize that you're just a human conduit of the divine, you can give yourself over to God. The power of God can be manifested through you. Needs will be met. Burdens will be removed. Yokes will be destroyed. Lives will be changed. Marriages, broken relationships will be restored. All of that, but it won't be you doing it. It will be the Father living through you. The name of the book, Kimberly, is on being a servant of God by Dr. Warren W. Wearsby. Open up your heart to receive. I'm excited about this word this morning. It's going to be a blessing. Now that you're built up and edified, let's get into the word for this morning. So I've been teaching on intentional progress in 2022. At our church, um, our leaders have declared that this is a year of progression for us. And uh, while I do know, and I do believe that it is a year of progression, the Lord wanted me to teach on the fact that we got to be intentional about this progress, right? So we can't just sit back and wait for it to happen. If you want to be if you want whatever God has for you, you got to be intentional and deliberate. So this year, we're going to be deliberate, intentional, focused about the type of uh, experience and, and progress and grace and advancement, acceleration, increase that we believe that God has already destined for us to have in 2022. That said, we've been looking at uh, the life of Jesus. So this is um, Life Lessons from Jesus, part nine. I trust that you've been enjoying this series. What we've been doing, we've been going through uh, different a lesson from the life of Jesus from the gospel according to St. John. I'm going to continue to do that again uh, today. Once again, I'm laying the foundation for this year with these six steps. And we've been walking through these steps, praying, discerning, hearing the voice of God, then planning and preparing, laying out some things that we believe that the Father wants us to do because we know that prepared blessings come to prepared people, then waiting and discerning on God's timing because the right thing at the wrong time becomes the wrong thing. And then launching out whenever God tells you to launch out. And then we measure progress to ensure that we are actually incrementally becoming the men, the women that God has called us to be for such a time as this. And then after we've done everything that we're supposed to do, then we have to wait and add patience to our faith because it's through faith and patience that we obtain the promises of God. And we will not cast away our confidence for it has a full recompense of reward. Hebrews 10 and 35, glory to God. And so we're going to be in faith and patience and believe even that in the fullness of God's timing, it will come to pass. And then lastly, when it's time for, for you to receive, that you're in a position to receive and you, you don't fight against the blessing and you receive everything that God wants you to have. We're going to talk about all these things in this series. Right now, I'm just dealing with the first one. So that said, let's continue uh, with life lessons from the life of Jesus. We looked at John chapter five, cha chapter six, chapter eight, chapter 12. Today, we cross over into John chapter 14. <laughs> So John 14, verses 5 through 10 from the New International Version. Let me read it for you, and then we got four things to share. Here we go. Thomas said to him, this is John 14, where Jesus was saying, hey, listen, I'm going to have to go, but don't worry about it. Where I am, I'm going to receive you one day in my father's house of many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. And then Thomas said to him, Lord, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? He was like, well, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He was like, well, hold on. He was like, you know the way. Lord, I don't even know where you're going. So, I mean, like, what do you mean I'm supposed to know the way if I don't even know where you're going? He's like, listen, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, then you would 
be known as uh, you would know the father as well. So from now on, you do not know him, but you've seen him. You you saying that you don't you don't know the father, but you know me. And if you know me, you know the father. You've already seen him. And Philip said, "This is something that Philip said that really got Jesus upset." Lord, okay, fine. I don't understand what you're saying. Just show us the Father, and that will be enough. Show us the Father, and that will be enough. And then Jesus got upset. He said, wait a minute, hold on, stop, wait a minute. Well, you've been with, with me for three and a half years, and you're telling me to show you the Father? Are you kidding me? He said, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been with you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say to me, show us the Father? Don't you believe? That I am in the Father and the Father's in me. Jesus went off. He said, the words that I say to you, these are not my words. I'm not speaking in my own authority. And you know that the Father, he gives me the words. The work that I perform, I'm not the guy doing the work. It's the Father performing the work through me. What are you talking about? Show me the Father. You've seen me. You've been with, with me for three and a half years. And you asking me, show you. The, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Oh, my God. I was like, okay, okay, Jesus, calm down. So what does this mean? For you today, like that, when Jesus going off on them like that in John 14, what does that mean for you today? Well, I have four things to share with you in this morning. Let me get into these four things, and I believe they're going to be a blessing to you. You ready? Four things. Number one, this is where I need you to rid your heart and mind of all distractions. Here we go. Number one, you and I, we're supposed to develop the oneness mindset that Jesus had. Jesus lived with a oneness mindset, and we're supposed to live with that same oneness mindset. So I'm going to address this point now in John 14. I'm going to teach you in John 16 that we're one with the Father because of the Holy Spirit. And then I'm going to come back to this point about being one with the Father when we get to John 17. Because in John 17, Jesus says it all again, and he says it a different way. But at the end of the day, the ultimate goal, so you're going to hear this multiple times, you're supposed to be one with the Father. That's the mindset. The mindset is you're supposed to be one with the Father. That's the mindset you're supposed to have. The ultimate goal is not just for you to see yourself as someone who worships God. The ultimate goal is not just for you to see yourself as someone who is submitted to a God, but the ultimate goal is for you to see yourself as one with God. Worshiping God and seeing yourself as one with God are not the same thing. In Philippians chapter 2, Paul taught us to develop the mind of Christ or to put on the mind of Christ. The NIV reads, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. You got to have the same mindset that Jesus had. What was the mindset that Paul was talking about in Philippians chapter 2? Well, Paul went on to say that Jesus had this mindset. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He, he saw himself as equal with God. That's the mindset. And, G, and Paul is saying, you got to put on that mindset. Now, I'm not saying, to be clear, I'm not delusional. I'm not saying that you are God. I'm not saying that I am God, right? I know that there is a God and I'm not him. <laughs> I know that there is a God and you're not him. Okay, I got that. Let's get past that. What I am saying is, when you develop the mindset that Jesus had, you, number one, you know that you are a carrier of God because you're filled with the Holy Spirit. So you're taking God with you into every meeting, conversation, and activity that you engage in on a daily basis. You're submitted to God. God is submitted to you. Number two, you are gradually dying to self to the point where you're dying to sin and self and selfishness, right? And so when you die to sin and self and selfishness, you get to the point where your life is no longer about you. And so once I'm dying to sin and self and selfishness, I can get to the point where I my life is no longer about me. The selfish desires that I had when I came to God, those things are gone. And now that those things are gone, number three, I can allow God to literally live through me every second of every day to the point when people come in contact with me they are actually coming in contact with God, right? So the, the goal is for me to see myself as a God carrier and to yield to God to the point I'm dying to self, I'm dying to sin and self and selfishness, my selfish desires. And I can actually get to the point where I can have the same mindset that Jesus had. I'm one with the Father 
when people come in contact with me, they're coming in contact with the Father. Matter of fact, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Me and the Father are one. That's the mindset Jesus had. Jesus actually prayed in John 17 for us to have that same mindset. And when we get to John 17, I'll talk about it. Number two, so the mindset is you got to be one with the Father. Number two, that's your goal, being one with the Father. Jesus told his disciples that looking at him and looking at the Father were the same thing. Jesus established his identity in his relationship with the Father, and Jesus is our example. He modeled how we're supposed to live. We should establish our identity in him. So here's a few things you can learn from this. Number one, establish your identity in him. So for example, I'm, I'm, I was born Dominican, right? But guess what? I was born again. So while I appreciate the fact that I'm Dominican, I'm from New York and I let everybody know I'm from Brooklyn, right? But then again, I was born again. So while I appreciate being a Brooklynite, while I appreciate being Dominican, while I appreciate a lot of things from my culture and experience and all of that, and God does flow through my personality, right? So, so I, God can use my personality for his glory. My ultimate identity should be the fact that I am born again that I'm a child of the Most High God. So while I appreciate the fact that I was born Hispanic, I was born again from above. So while I do identify with the Hispanic community and I try to do everything that I can for the Hispanic and Latinx community, at the same time, what's more important, the higher responsibility I have is to represent God in this world. So my identity is really established in him. Everybody that knows Rick Pina knows that I'm a child of God, knows that I'm a man of God. So when you become one, you can actually become one with God to the point where God is free. When you yield to him and you die to sin and self and selfishness, God is free to make the impact that he wants to make through you for his glory. Now, let me be clear. I'm putting the emphasis on God and not you. I'm saying God is the one who is free to make the impact. You're not the one making the impact. God is the one that's making the impact. But if you yield to him, he can make the impact through you. So when you, when you understand that, you can develop your confidence in this truth. What's the truth? God is on me, in me, with me, and for me. Let me say that again. God is on me, in me, with me, and for me. And when I'm living with that reality that God is on me and in me and with me and for me, now there's nothing that I can't do because there's nothing that God can't do. And he is on me and in me and with me and for me. So you should give up the life that you wanted, the life that you planned so that you can live the life that God planned for you. I know that that's not easy. Uh, and I know that it takes time, but if you would yield to God, submit to him and die to self, it's going to be worth it in the end. As you prepare for 2022, say this to yourself. I'm just going to say, you don't have to repeat after me, but just hear what I'm saying and, and meditate on what I'm saying. Say this to yourself. Self, have a conversation with yourself. Self, at the beginning of other years, I have made resolutions. I have formulated plans. I have taken the time to map out what those years were going to be like. I did all of that on my own. I did all of that with my human ability, my human power, my human strength. I then tried to live out those plans with my own ability. And you and I know uh, how that turned out. <laughs> so this year, self, is going to be different. God is no longer just a part of my life. God is my life. God is no longer just a part of my life. God is my life. I am in him. He is in me. I am one with him. He's one with me. There is no separation between me and God. All I want for this year is what God already planned for me. Whatever he planned for me to have, whatever he planned for me to do, is all I want to have and to do. Nothing more, nothing less. I yield myself to God in every way. My life is his life. I am dead to self. I am a dead man walking. The life that I live now I live as a human conduit of the divine. When people come in contact with me, they will come in contact with God because I am one with the Father. That's a conversation you can have with yourself. You got to minister to yourself sometimes. 
you got to remind yourself that, listen, you've tried this before. You've done New Year's resolutions. You've done vision boards. You've mapped out things. You did all this stuff, and then you try to do it on your own, and you know how that, that, that turned out. At best, it was 50-50, right? So at the end of the day, you got to stop all of that. It's, your life can no longer... It, 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 I don't want you to say, you know what? I worship a God. My life has a component to where on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights, I worship God. I have a moment. I have a time. I have a dedicated period on a Sunday morning where I go give God praise. No, that I don't want you to live with that mindset. The mindset is this. God is my life. I'm talking about 24-7, 365. God is my life. And if God is your life, then points three and four are going to apply to you. And number three, I'm going to talk about words. And number four, I'm going to talk about work. Let's talk about it for t- this morning. Number three, The Father will provide you the words, and you got to have the faith to speak them. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they're not words that come from my own authority. Jesus was not the originator of the words that he spoke. Jesus was simply providing the mouth, and the Father was filling the mouth with the words. It's kind of like what God told uh, Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1. God says to Jeremiah, listen, Jeremiah, before you were born, I already knew you, right? Before you were formed in your mother's belly, I had an ordination service in heaven, and I had already ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. And so Jeremiah was like, wait a minute, a prophet? Uh, A prophet speaks your words on this planet. Uh, I'm a young man. I don't know what to say. I don't have your words. And then God says, no, don't say, don't speak against the promise. Open up your mouth. And then the Bible says that God put his words in Jeremiah's mouth. Jesus was saying, the words that I speak, I'm not the originator of these words. God puts his words in my mouth. If you provide the mouth, the father will provide the words. You got to provide the mouth and you got to provide the voice and the father will give you the content. God's words will flow from your lips and people will experience the supernatural because God's words come with his power and his authority. In Jeremiah 1 and 12, the Bible says that God watches over his word to perform it. So God is not obligated to perform your words, but God is obligated to perform his words. And when you allow his words to flow from your lips, then his words have the same power, the same authority that they had when they came from the lips of Jesus. Matter of fact, in Psalms 103 and 20, the Bible says that angels hearken or respond to the voice of the word. When you give God's word a voice in this planet, what people say, well, what does God sound like? Right now, he sounds like a Dominican kid from Brooklyn because I'm the one who's speaking. Like, like people say, you know, you're on, on, on a Delta flight and people say, well, what does Delta Airlines sound like? It depends on who's speaking, right? At the, if, the, if the pilot is making an announcement, it sounds like the pilot. If the flight attendant is making an announcement, well, it sounds like the flight attendant. Right now, I'm the one who's speaking and it's God through me. So right now, God sounds like a Dominican kid from Brooklyn. So if you give God your mouth, God will give you the words. God will give you wisdom and insight, revelation, knowledge, and understanding that far exceed your power, your ability, and your strength. And when you speak God's words through your mouth and your voice, angels have to respond. Angels move because you're not the originator of the words. The power of God is released because you're not the one coming up with the words. And as a matter of fact, God will give you supernatural wisdom to the point where you will say something that you've never heard before. God will give you wisdom that exceeds your education and your experience. And so you will say something that comes out of your mouth through your own voice that you have to write it down. You could be in a meeting and you have to write it down because you've never heard it before. Because God is flowing through you to the point where it's God's words. Jesus said things that baffled scholars. Jesus made statements that caused an uproar. And by his own admission, Jesus was like, I'm not the one coming up with the words. It's the Father giving me the words. So listen, look at me. Part of getting ready for 2022 is yielding to the Father in every way. You got to see yourself as one with the Father. And so I'm just going to give myself over to you, Father. You give me the words and you perform the work. And so let this be part of your prayer for uh, 2022. I'm going to pray it and you set your faith in agreement. Father, I yield myself over to you every day in every way. You give me the words to speak. And as you do, I will have the faith to say them out loud. 
as a result, people will hear you through me. Your love and your power will flow through my lips and through my personality, and it will all be for your glory. Say amen to that. So last one, number four, the father will perform the work, but you got to have the faith to actually attempt it, right? So God will give you the words and God will perform the work. Jesus said in John 14 and 10, it is the father living in me. Not only has he given me the words, but he's the one that does the work. So Jesus is like, you know what? I'm providing the body and I'm providing the willingness and I'm providing the faith and the father is doing the work. And so when you, when you provide the body, like you got a body, God is looking for hands to touch in the earth. You got hands. God is looking for legs to walk in the earth. You got legs. God is looking for a mouth. You got a mouth. So God is looking for you. God is looking for you. You provide the body. You provide the willingness. You provide the faith. God will provide the works. He will do something. He will do stuff through you that will far exceed anything that you ever imagined. And it won't be because you're worthy. It would only be because God is good, because he planned to do it from the foundations of the world. So the day you die to self, the day you, I'm not, I'm not saying that you could do whatever you, you know, the power of me. I'm saying that without God, we can do nothing, but God can do anything. Everything that he planned to do is what we want. As long as we get out of the way, this is the grace life. This is, this is what I talk about all the time. You are a human conduit of the divine. Jesus's power came from his submission. Jesus's power came from the fact that he was not the one doing it. It was the father living in him, giving him the words and performing the work. You can live the same way. If you give yourself over to God, he will give you the words and he will perform the work. You are one with God. Say amen to that. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I hope that you're enjoying these life lessons from the life of Jesus. We've gone through John 5, John 6, John 8, John 12, we're in John 14. We still got to get over to John 16. We still got to get over to John 17. And I I trust that these lessons have been a blessing to you. I know that they've been a blessing to me. I want you to lift up your voice and speak this over your life. Say, Father, Jesus became one with you. My goal is to do the same. When I came to you, I came with a heart full of desires, hopes, dreams, and aspirations. But honestly, Father, not all of those came from you. There were things in my heart that were selfish desires. The more I grow in you and the more you lead me to die to self, the more I lay my selfishness at the altar. I release my old life so I can embrace the life that you destined me to have. As I die to self, I live for you. I now provide you a body. (laughs) <laughs> I provide you a mouth, I provide you a, a voice, and I become a conduit of your grace and power in this world. You give me the words, your words flow from my lips, and when they do, they have the same authority that they have when they flowed from the lips of Jesus. You perform work through me. You will leave an indelible mark through me that will not easily be erased. Through me, I believe souls will be saved. Burdens will be removed. Yokes will be destroyed. Lives will be changed. Dead organizations will be revived. It's all gonna happen because I'm one with you and I'm a human conduit of the divine. This is why I can boldly declare, greater is coming for me, because I'm not the one who's doing it. It is you, Father, and I give you praise. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word, so please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button so you can get my notes for free in your email inbox. Listen, I hope that you really are enjoying this, this series, learning life lessons from Jesus. This is how we're supposed to live. I love John 14 and 10. It's the father who lives in me. He gives me the words. He performs the work. Two verses later, he said, now the works that I do, you're going to do and even greater works because I go to the father. Listen, I love you. God loves you too. Do me a favor. Go into the chat. If this message was a blessing to you, leave me some comments in the chat. I go back and I read those and then share this message right now 
on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. Have an amazing day. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.